Every day I get questions about breast implants and I thought this would be a great opportunity to go over what I consider the breast implant basics. When we talk about implants in broad categories, we break them down into either saline filled or silicone filled. Uh, one thing that I think is interesting is that all implants have a silicone rubber shell. And so the controversy about whether or not silicone's in the body is really only ever raised about the gel inside a silicone gel implant, okay? Uh, saline implants come with a nominal fill volume and they have some flexibility in them. Uh, but as you overfill a saline implant, you will develop what I call scalloping. So silicone implants and saline implants ripple and so if I hold this implant here, if you can see that in the silicone implant is a ripple, salines will do that when filled to their, no their nominal fill volume. If you overfill a saline implant, it will develop what I call scalloping. And so that's something that can be seen in thin women uh, at the side of the breast, where there's not a great deal of tissue covering those saline implants. So although very good implants, they have limitations in how they feel, uh, and the fact that they ripple more are the negatives, okay? Positives are when a saline implant ruptures, it deflates and you know it's broken. Silicone implants will not lose their volume and so when they're ruptured, we don't know they're broken. But the current generation of silicone implants are now a cohesive gel. So the older silicone implants were more of a liquid. And so when that shell broke, the silicone would leave the shell and go into what's called the capsule. That's a natural scar tissue that surrounds the breast implant. But since the capsule is usually around the same shape as the implant, a woman wouldn't know that necessarily that that implant is ruptured. Once that implant is ruptured and that silicone is in contact with the capsule, you can see capsular contracture, which is the hardening of the breast and the changing in the shape of the breast. Now with cohesive gel, what that means is that gel is now bound to each other more tightly, bound to itself more tightly. And so that implant, if it were to rupture, if the shell were to break, that gel would not leave that shell. And so the shell integrity can be broken, but it won't change the shape of the implant and the gel won't be in contact with the capsule. So theoretically, the capsular contracture rate should be lower and we expect that these will have a better long-term survivability. These implants come in three degrees of cohesiveness. So what we see here are the softest silicone gel implants. They're called responsive gel. But when you hold them up, you see the rippling that takes place and they lose about 16% as the number that we quote of the volume in the upper pole, right? So in other words, when you are standing up, more of that silicone will fall to the bottom of the breast. The soft touch is an intermediate uh, in terms of its cohesiveness, and it only loses about 9%. It ripples less, but it still is soft. The cohesive or the most cohesive gel implant is the firmest. It ripples the absolute least, only loses about 3% of its upper pole fullness. But the trade-off for this is it's a little too firm, at least in my opinion. So how we choose which implant for which individual is based on how important upper pole fullness is, how thick the breast tissue is and will it camouflage rippling. And um, usually I'm in the soft touch camp, which is kind of the best of both worlds. It's soft and less likely to ripple.